presentation from Fossil to Future given by Paul Janacek, fleet manager of Austrian Post, shows how Austrian Post electrifies their fleet. It was given to our MBA students of the Mobility MBA. Well, not only describes the journey Austrian Post takes, but there are some astonishing findings. For example, that the total cost of ownership of battery electric vehicles at Austrian Post for distribution are lower than for combustive engines. He also describes the necessities and the change from a distribution provider to a power plant provider. After a short introduction to Austrian Post, he presented the decarbonization roadmap. Actually, these are all emissions done or produced by our transport in Austrian Post, uh, the, the, the highest uh, level, the highest uh, top of the bar, you see the transport. So this is meant by the trucks being operated in Austria, internal and external emissions are in, always uh, measured in, in our group uh, so we're together with the subcos. And with delivery of, of parcels in the, in the, in the yellow uh, column, you see a pretty good structure, which is distributed, I would say, 50-50 for transport and for last mile. There were some relevant uh, points of interest for you. Last year, the transport emissions already decreased a lot. This was the shift to HVO 100, so as an intermediate technology. And 2030, you see here that the uh, orange bar diminishes. This means that we are emission-free on last mile. And the, the mentioned before, target 24, our plan is to be then free of emissions, so to say, within our delivery network. Fleet structure, to give you an idea, before we keep in the details, um, we are last mile delivery driven. So you see 8,000 vehicles out of the 10,000 are out of delivery. There is a small amount of trucks, around 200 are now in own operations and 300 subcos. Uh, yeah, and then the rest is some nitty gritty. Last mile, uh, I would say field of interest, especially for city delivery. But at the end, we reach 50% now, and then the rest of the next couple of years, we'll see whether we are successful. When does it all begin? Post 2011 was the bold communication set that we will deliver CO2 neutral. But the, the more interesting thing was the acquisition of the first 10 vehicles battery electric. The year 2011 battery electric vehicles were some kind of a <laughs> far away of an imagination that the solution could be something sustainable but it was more a signal of intent that Austrian Post is serious mm -hmm. on, the, on the way to migrate to a sustainable ecosystem. But what brought us now in the position that we are here in that 50% electrification was the early beginnings. And again, this, these early beginnings is something that we don't pronounce we are smart or something like this, but we have a long way of experience gone and we have a lot of data gathered in between and this relentless testing and trying is some kind of proposition or proposition to materialize now sustainable and without any doubt significantly cheaper in last mile delivery than <coughs> And this is based here, as you can see here in this uh, simple cost comparison, that the vehicle itself is way more cheaper. And the second lever is that the cost of energy based on the efficiency gains are way cheaper compared to an ice car. Why? On last mile, our, re our vehicles take around 10 to 12 liters. 200 start stops a day, 200 start stops with the motors and the engine on, <laughs> because our drivers do not tend to switch off and on their motor vehicles. Uh, together with a, the drive frame, which is highly efficient, brings us here a, to say the more the vehicles go, the cheaper it gets. And this is out of experience of, of more than 10 years now that the vehicle doesn't break down at all. Uh, so the first Nissans are still in operations, entering now the 11th year operation, compared to a combustion engine, which breaks down on average in six to seven years of operation because <coughs> drivetrain, gearbox, transmission is completely done. And especially the downsized motors are making us a lot of problems that we phase out this week this week is earlier than planned. As this old 1.2, 1.4 liters Turbo, uh, highly turbo loaded vehicles are really not the right vehicle for last mile. Honestly, to say, this is a special case for Postal. Uh, other companies won't face that tremendous cost advantages because they don't have that exhaustive delivery. But especially for the trucks, on a different way, 
Uh, last year, we migrated the, the full fleet to HVO 100, which is kind of a, uh, I would say, transformation, a bridging technology where we as, as last mile mobility experts are not that happy with the technology because it still burns something and burning something is not the best of the environment, but it reduces emissions at least by 80 to 90 percent and provides us a, a relaxed time frame to migrate our truck fleet because at the moment from the technology perspective, uh, we were not able, we are not able to roll these uh, electric trucks, which are already in operations all over the world, especially the UK has a high adoption rate there with, with the Amazons. In our tool, in our daily business, it's not so easy. <coughs> our trucks go on a three day, on a three shift day, so they are in operations uh, three times eight hours a day, and we have hardly any interruptions with the truck. And then therefore, we are at the moment here in the phase of testing and finding out. In compared the same way as with last mile delivery, so we ordered the first two vehicles last year, we ordered four vehicles this year, and we bring them into operations on as the last and as, as the first acquisition uh, in in Vienna, where they do their the tours between the logistics center in Zostorf to the airport. And for that, they are they already show the same uh, same results as as last mile, so very efficient in the drivetrain, efficient in fuel consumption. But of course, with half a million of acquisition costs, it's not that easy way to finance at all and to have a TCO out of that. So at the moment, next to this to the HVO migration, um, we are a bit in, so to say, in, in a waiting position to, to wait a bit where the market develops. You know, there are still voices on the market saying that uh, hydrogen is a solution. Many people, the cost advantages of battery electric trucks in distribution are astonishing, but also astonishing are the remarks of Paul regarding the passenger cars in the post fleet. And therefore, this is a main difference to the yellow fleet. Simply said, yellow fleet is bought, operated and sold by ourselves. So it's our own fleet. Whereas for the passenger cars of the 600 vehicles, this is not our field of high focus, I would say. So we don't see here the, the efficiency gains in that way, so we lease the vehicles. And you as expert know that leasing rates kind of a pain point at the moment in terms of, of residual value. Uh, we fight hard to have their positive cases in, in, uh, in, uh, in, in this environment and, and permanently adopting the just our car for these years. And a lot of these headlines are about <clears throat> the major topics range, the battery, uh, the emissions from the battery production, which nobody cared about the emissions from oil, <clears throat> and all about any acquisition costs and all this stuff. And for electrification, you really have to dive deeper. This is what we did, basically, because we had the opportunity to do, and to find out where the real levers are. And it's like the iceberg or from, the, from outside. You don't, ex you don't expect or you see anything. And these benefits you mentioned below are the long-lasting benefits, my opinion, which will end up in a full electrified fleet environment in the future, not only for last mile. Why? Some learnings. Our fleet migrates already. When you look at the, the, the fleet department, we had to really go through a tremendous change also in terms of staffing. Um, and what we did was to adopt to, to data technology and to do more towards data driven decisions because we operate a steady fleet. Your challenge is to bring the right vehicles to operation and to order the right vehicles, which means that you don't need 100 kilowatts for the city district to it because we want to do it way too much for the battery system. And on the other hand, your battery systems have, that, have to be that big enough that our drivers can go if they need to without charging in between. This was the first challenge. Second challenge is now the, the charging network, uh, a burden for us, basically not a burden, but an asset, as in the future we will have fun with the network when we sell energy packs and grids. But of course, it does cost money, and this is also incorporated in our TCO. So the charging network is incorporated in the TCO, as you have sh uh, seen it before. Uh, and then therefore, you have to <coughs> build up expertise in there. What's, what's the best way forward in terms of how to uh, install 300 chargers? Uh, in terms of how to solve them, also in terms of how much energy you need. You don't need 10 kilowatts per charge point, or you don't need 25 kilowatts. It's the, the charging management, because there you have the the intelligence there you have the where you learn how you what your fleet is really doing and you learn how to really um, uh, optimize the energy need and then also to optimize where to charge and when to charge 
uh, maybe when you count the figures together, you will recognize these are not 4,000 charge points. Yes, the rest is out of management at the moment due to our long-term legacy. These are all charge points not under operation under the network, so we have to already do the refit system of the old charge points. But the basic charging system for us in logistics is overnight charging, so AC, and charge the vehicle in a period from 12 to 14 hours. So we have a pretty long standstill time on our depots, as operations is only done once for, for last mile. And this network is, uh, so to say, added or, or yeah, tremendous change in the, in the vehicle team itself, so in the culture. We invested a lot in, in, in piloting, a lot in trial and errors, and it's always easy said you have to make an innovation culture, but what's, what's innovation culture at all? And for us it was, uh, first of all, key to, to shift a bit aside the ROI policy within Austrian Post, so that not every experiment goes through the whole circle of, of, of our eye calculation uh, so we, we get some so to say playing money for our our our, star, our things we installed during the last 10 years and together with the idea that it's worth to do every test and we had a lot of tests not working out we have charge points in operation ahead of in operation for six months and then sorted them out because it's were, were crap basically we have already charge points still in car so have 10 for 5,000 each, we are, which are crap and cannot be integrated in the system. But this is kind of a downside when you when you it works or not. And this was really kind of an interesting journey also for our team, because you see the team, <laughs> Silver Service, <laughs> already together with uh, young age people, and, and we all shared one idea, basically, because to say we we are not really experts in every, in every field here, but our idea was, we are sure that this technology can be the solution for Austrian Post and the solution for our economy during the next decades. And, and this common idea brought us together and was really one of these key elements that we are there where we are there. The organigram looked like this in the old combustion engine business. We had one team being responsible for buying, operating, repairing and selling the vehicles. And now it's spread all over these this, uh, units we have already installed in Austrian Post. So we have experts for charging, we have experts for uh, the electricians basically for solar systems and, and uh, electricians for charging management systems. We have energy experts already on board uh, being responsible for finding the best way forward how to buy in the future energy and how to sell energy in the future. So this ecosystem is completely opening up and these guys, these wiki engineers are now a fraction of that 2017. So there, because there is nothing to do. <laughs> so we, you don't talk about any breakdowns of gearboxes or transmissions or something like this. We just receive uh, bills or invoices for rates. And then there we go. You have, we have to understand the why that we are convinced that also with zero cost, this is starting with this technology. Everybody adopts now and installs PV systems. Austrian Post, there's 80, 80 megawatts now, 10 into 20 megawatts. <clears throat> the whole market, everybody, the private customers, consumers, uh, business customers, install heavily in uh, solar systems. But what is the effect of these renewable installations? It's the effect is this, and, and you, sorry for the graphics down here, but the ordinary cost of energy curve, the green here is already showing the more flexible or the more installation of renewables, the more flexibility you need in the network. We can see here on the, on the, on the map, this one depot, we have around 250 depots. <clears throat> and these 250 depots are spread all over Austria and will finally operate 8,000 LCVs, being connected bi-directional to the network and supported with a strong charging management system together with solar power and together with battery stationary battery systems. And what will then turn out is that Austrian Post <coughs> is not only a delivery provider, but also operates a huge power plant. The technology used is vehicle to grid. And, and vehicle to grid is already there. This is not technology we're waiting for. It's already there. Manufacturers open their, their connectors for that. So we will test the first 10 wheels this year. Paul discussed also the idea of recycling the batteries, but also the challenges they have using used batteries as energy storages. 
This is a good idea, but there are still some problems. Many thanks to Paul Janacek for this excellent presentation for our MBA students and also for the permission to publish this video on my YouTube channel. If you like it, please make comments or li leave likes. And if you want to see more videos about Road to Zero Emission, subscribe my channel.